Welcome to Mind Pump, the world's number one ranked fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. We actually got number one in a poll here that we did in our office at Mind Pump headquarters. Yeah, you said joke already. We're the best one. I know. I'll do yeah, it again. It's okay. All right. So uh, in this episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by listeners and viewers like you. Uh, but the way we open the episode is by talking about current events, talk about stuff that's happening in our lives. Sometimes we mention uh, our sponsors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a breakdown of the entire episode. We talk about uh, Adam's first child scare. That's how we opened the episode. Oh, man. Freaked him out a little bit. Then we talk about all the stupid things we used to do as teenagers. Uh, not all of them. There's some stuff we don't want to mention on yeah, the podcast. Yeah, not the real bad stuff. But uh, still stupid stuff. Then we talk about Joe Rogan on Spotify and how some episodes are missing. The conspiracy theorists are uh, buzzing. They're yes. buzzing right now. Yeah, why is that? Then we talk about the arrest in Australia. Uh, I guess a lady did a post on Facebook that the thought police didn't like, so they arrested her. That's crazy. Sounds, uh, yeah, suspect. New York is opening up their gyms again. Thank God. About time. I talk about how using a cast iron skillet can actually increase your iron content. So by cooking with it, you get iron in your diet. And during that conversation, I mentioned Butcher Box because they make the best grass feed, uh, grass fed meat available. Uh, got tongue tied there. Feed my meat. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's good meat, high quality. It's delivered to your door. They are one of our sponsors. Oh, check this out. You're gonna like this. If you go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump and use the code mind pump, you'll get ground beef for life, two pounds of it for life. Okay. Dang. That's a crazy, crazy giveaway. I love butcher box. Do it now because it won't last. Then we talk about uh, saving marriages, the stuff that you need to do to save your marriage. Part of that is yeah. uh, making uh, peace with the fact that she probably likes the temperature in the bed in the room yeah. differently than you do. You're different people. Now, one way you can solve this is by getting a chili pad. So what a chili pad is, it's a water-cooled device. It goes on your bed, and you can cool one side of the bed, warm up the other side of the bed. Essentially, temperature controlled. No EMFs. It's, again, it's, it uses water, um, and it makes this nice, very low white noise sound that helps you sleep. It's a pretty amazing product. It saved both Adam and Justin's marriage yeah. so far. Shout out Chili Pad. There you go. Um, and because you listen to Mind Pump, you get a discount. Here's what you do. Go to ChiliTechnology.com. That's C-H-I-L-I Technology.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code on the page and get 25% off. And then we talk about Adam's new series on Instagram called DILF Wisdom. You heard me right. I said DILF. <laughs> yeah. Then we answer some questions. All right. Here's the first one. This person wants to know what exercises we recommend for people who are looking to strengthen their joints due to the fact that they've had previous injuries that were related to sprains and, and aches and stuff around the ankles and the knees. So like, what are good exercises to recommend? Now, in that portion, we recommend our MAPS Prime Bundle. Um, these are correctional exercise and mobility programs, and we bundle them together at discount. If you want to take a look at them, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com. The next question this person says, look, when you're training athletes, what are your go-to exercises and mobility drills? So we talk all about athletic training and that part of the episode. And of course, we mentioned our athletic training program, MAPS Performance. You can find that one also at mapsfitnessproducts.com. The third question, this person wants to know about hernias, like what causes them, how to prevent them, um, like what's the deal? So Justin gets to tell us a great story of how he yeah. got his hernia. Apparently, I'm the only one. Yeah, it was, uh, it was bad pooping. Uh, that's what caused it. Uh, so we talk about all the stuff you do to prevent a hernia. Um, and then if you get a hernia, how to work around it. And then the final question, this person wants to know about deodorants, shampoos, lotions. Like, can they adversely affect your body? A lot of people don't realize this, but the stuff you put on your skin oftentimes ends up in your body. Your skin is the largest organ uh, in your body. And so you probably should pay attention to some of the chemicals in those products. And we do talk about some of our favorite companies that provide natural products in those categories. By the way, if you want to check out any of our other hookups and discounts that we have with lots of companies that we have vouched for, we've looked into, um, you can go to our page, mindpumppartners.com, and you'll see all the companies that we've worked with that we think are good companies to get products from had our first uh mom and dad scare yesterday no what why yeah so check this out. so yesterday um i was here a little bit later right and katrina calls me like around four and she's like hey when are you coming home and i'm like oh i'm getting ready to leave soon she's like oh, okay well we're 
over at Almaden Lake. I'm like, what are you doing over there? And she's like, oh, we're scouting out. Because I guess they, they're doing that photo shoot later on today. And her and Rachel were scouting out places to go shoot for the apparel and all that stuff like that. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, and she's like, yeah, I, I'm down here with Max and we're just hanging out and stuff like that. She's all, but if you're heading home, we'll head home soon. I was like, okay. So I hang on the phone. Uh, that was like in here. And I, I, I walk outside, get in the car. I'm not even a block down the road. And then she calls. And I, I pick up the phone. It's on speakerphone in my car. And she's you could tell she's hysterically crying. Oh, oh I hate and, that. And the oh. first words out of her mouth is, don't panic. Don't freak out. But Max fell and hit his head. And there's blood everywhere. And that was what she says to me. And I'm like, oh, man. what? Where are you at? Oh, I'm at Almaden Lake still. I'll drop you a pan. But relax. It's I, it's good. He's gonna, I hope he's going to be okay. I, I think he's going to be okay. He's fine. And I was like, don't don't freak out. I'm like, what do you mean don't freak out? You call me, you're crying, and you say he hit his head and there's blood everywhere? Oh, my God. Oh, dude. I was, So what happened? I was doing like 120 down, you know, somewhere. I think Almaden Lake should take like 15 minutes to get there. I think it was there in three. Yeah. And you transported there, basically. Yeah, I, 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 <laughs> yeah. Much did. I know what that feels like. Oh, yeah, God. Bro. Yeah. I know what that feels yeah. like. So I, what happened? Is he, did he get? Did he have so to get stitches or something? He's, he didn't get stitches. And what he, he hit his head on. He was walking around and, and in the dirt area and stuff where there's rocks and sticks. And so, you know, I hear hit a rock. So I'm thinking like he fell and he hit his head on a boulder or something. He hit his head on like a little rock and the little rock like cut and punctured the top of his hairline. And you know, uh, when you yeah. cut your hair. Super vascular. Oh. Yeah. yeah it, cut, it bleeds a lot. Oh, so he yeah. did. He When I got there, like, you know, there was dried blood all over his face and uh, his shirt. I mean, it did look like a fucking scary scene. Uh. Um, and I got there and I guess some lady had seen, seen her kind of freaking out and stuff like that. And it was really nice. She had a... Um, a, a sweat band, a he headband that she gave her, and she so she took the headband to put pressure on it to keep it from mm -hmm. bleeding. Otherwise, she was trying to calm him down, calm herself down, put stop the blood from bleeding all over the place. It's getting everywhere. She had her mask, and she was using her mask to do it, and the mask was all soaked in blood. And yeah, I get there, and yeah, you know, by the time I get there, I, I think Katrina, I had to calm down more and and worry about than I did Max. Like Max was like, yeah, well, he's already walking yeah, around. He's fine like, now. Yeah, bloody face yeah. and shit. He's got a head. <laughs> he's got a bandana. Oh, on. I'll show man. you a picture of him. Yeah. So it wasn't a big cut then. It was just. I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a pretty deep cut. It won't. It's deep. It's not long. So it won't need stitches because of that. That because mm. it's not like a really long deep cut. It's like short and deep. So it like you know, the rock definitely got got in there, punctured it pretty good. It's definitely his where his face was scratched up. A little bit oh man um and katrina was really worried because so like one of the things that <clears throat> one of the i don't know if i've brought this up on the show but like one of the little battles that i'm having with like the family and this is not just her and her family it's my family everybody is like um everybody wants to put shoes on him and i'm always like no no shoes like you can put them on for a picture mm -hmm. let them look cool or like that like I'm, I'm fine with that like i and i'm a shoe guy i like all that but for he's learning to walk right now I'm like, so if we are anywhere, get those feet strong. Yeah, that's right. I said, take his. I don't give a shit if there's gravel, dirt. That's I want that. If in fact, if it's in those situations, those are where I want him barefoot. And so you could tell that Katrina was all stressed out because she had his like Nikes on him, and he never wears shoes outside. Like I never like if he's. So you think he lost? He he oh, tripped he because he had the shoes. He, no, he just lost. Had didn't have his balance. She knew it too. She said it. She's like, you know, I was. She's like, I'm so fucking mad, and I knew. You're, I know you're gonna be pissed, and she goes. I had him in his shoes and she's like, he, and I was trying to find out like what exactly happened. She's like, he just tipped over, you know, he, you know how he kind of walks and then he sees a stick and then he squats down then he leans over. But she goes, you know, cause he had his shoes on. You could tell he didn't ha quite have the same balance and he leaned over to get the shoe and just tipped forward, went forward and went face first, you know, into the, into the dirt and the rocks and sticks and then just hit a rock the right way Man. and it opened him up. Yeah. And, so, yeah. Tell me that's not the worst feeling uh, dude. you yeah. could ever feel in your oh. life. It was right into my gut, like, bah! Oh, oh dude, yeah. I, it just there's stories, I, I mean, just thinking about that I can invoke partially the feeling, and it's just, I mean, one time my kid, we were uh, spending the night at my in-law's house because we were remodeling our home, and my son went to bed. It was a hot summer night, so we had all the windows open upstairs, and uh, my my at the time, my mother-in-law goes upstairs, and then she comes down, she's like, Where's your son? I'm like, what? And immediately, like the feeling I got was because the windows were open. Oh. He's a little, he's a little guy. He's like oh three years God. old, three and a half years old. Yeah, she's not where he was in bed. Mm. So we, I go upstairs, and it was, 
uh, maybe 15 seconds of not being able to find them. That's not long. No. But when you think. It's an well, eternity. It's a, yeah, <laughs> dude, that's forever. When you think someone came in through the window and took yeah. your kid. Well, my, remember. I and he was in the closet. He ended up, I don't know what he did. He fell asleep in the closet. But it, the, it was the worst feeling ever, ever. And I remember feeling like I would, I could, I would be able to go through the walls if I wanted to <laughs> just to find where he was. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Terrible. That's, well, I mean, I told you that story just the other day on the show, right? Where. I was messing with his monitor. Oh yeah, that wasn't yeah. even 50, that was like three seconds. Not even three seconds. That was enough time for my heart to sink and shoot out of the chair. Have you oh, had a yeah. mo- Have you had a moment yet where you hear uh, like a sus- suspicious noise and you and you like you get that like protective instinct kick in real hard? Does that happen? I, I I haven't had anything like that except for like what I just shared was when the you know when the the monitor went off and like I mean I did I, I shot up like I was like ready to catch some catch him somewhere you know what I'm saying <laughs> like, yeah. he, like I assume when I didn't see him in the crib that he was already like crying climbing out of it and I'm in the dark you know so that I did have that initial shoot up like in this defense mode can I catch him if he falls in even though I can't see shit you know yeah. But I haven't had anything like that, and and so far, all the little falls and bumps and loud noises and stuff like that, I typically am the one with um, Katrina that kind of calms her down. Like, he's okay, kids are resilient. Like, my sister, so my sister Sarah, who is the, the oldest of the two youngest, when she was a baby, before she was two years old, we had her in the ER twice for stitches. Mm-hmm. The first one, she was she was, when she's just like about Max's age right now, learning to kind of walk around, run around. We we're all sitting at the kitchen table, and she was running around on the tile and just tripped and went chin first into the tile and split her chin wide uh. open, blood gushing everywhere. And where we lived, we lived forty five minutes from the hospital, so you know, blood gushing everywhere, rushing her to a hospital forty five minutes away. And then the scariest one that she did, which was not that much longer afterwards, I think those stitches barely barely healed, like six months later. Uh, again, we're at dinner and she's kind of walking around and my parents had like a, you know, a shitty old school plastic trash can and she was, you know, take the top, took the top of the trash can lid off, just so happened to be a can of tuna that was there and uh, grabbed the, the lid and slit her wrist. Oh. oh. Slit her wrist, <laughs> blood gushing everywhere. I think that was like eight stitches for that one. Man. So like I've been around for things like that, which I feel like- Yeah, but when uh, it's your kid- yeah. Oh yeah, no, it's totally different, right? It's I mean, it was it's a different feeling than seeing your little sibling do it versus your son. I was your that son. kid, yeah. I was, uh, uh, and now it's like full circle, right? With my youngest ever, it's been like- He's but, a tornado. Man, just giving us a run for our money. Three times we've been to the ER with him, so over different things too like him falling hitting his head splitting it open uh marble one, yeah marble that <laughs> right there small, when you tell me was, that when you tell me that story man worst, I, worst moment of my life that was one of those that like just haunts me still to this day but uh yeah and then like they're jumping in trampoline and uh ethan accidentally jumped and landed on top of his chest and he, it scared him so bad that his whole uh like skin turned ghost white and so we looked at him and he looked like a ghost oh, wow. and it just like completely freaked us the hell out we're just like we got to take him somewhere because i just I, I can't look at him like this. this this like scares the shit out of me so oh. you have you've had three visits uh with um everett but none with ethan None with Ethan. Oh, see, that's so crazy, right? So yeah. you got your one he, kid. He's you, super you think, careful. You think, yeah. You, yeah, you think you get, oh, this is not going to be that bad because you have yeah, one kid. Totally. Yeah, totally. I was like, ah, oh, just let them do their thing. They're fine. <laughs> you know, and all this stuff. I mean, but Ethan does, he, he presses the boundaries with climbing. Like, so he's, he's the kid that's like up in the in the trees, like way too high. Yeah, yeah. And I have to check him every now and then, but like, whoa, you know, it just like sends that, uh, you know, scare signal to me like immediately. It, you guys ever watch that video? It's, uh, it's on YouTube where it's like dads, like, Saving their kids from like yeah. immediate oh, yeah. they got death. like superhuman yeah. powers. They just yeah. grab their yeah. like they're gonna fly off the edge of the cliff. Somebody, just, I think it was was yeah, it well, Barstool? Was it done Barstool? Done or something? They did like a little compilation of that. Uh-huh. Where there were like fifteen different dads like catching the kids. Well, like right, yeah. he'll be like on his phone or on the computer, and all of a sudden the kids like five feet away, and he falls, and he got dad grabs him well, with one hand. It yeah. is weird because like you know when my kids were really little, like certain cries and stuff, I would sleep all the way through. But if there was a sound that my brain perceived as an intruder. I was up, awake, and aggressive uh, before I even realized what was going on. I'd be yeah. up in the hallway with the bed sheets still attached See, to me. See, that's weird because I would really hear- strange. I would wake up from from noises that were off that were outside, Yes, but not like- Courtney would be the one that would recognize the, the different inconsistencies in the kids. Like, and you'd, you'd hear in the monitor or you'd hear, you know, just in the house, you could hear like wheezing or something. She'd be like, 
like get up and Dude. just and I wasn't as perceptive. I remember once when my son was two, he was at the top. I used to do this thing with him when he was little where he'd stand on the bottom, the last stair, and I'd say jump and he and I catch him. But one time, man, he was at the top of the stairs and he comes to the top, the very top of the stairs. I'm at the very bottom and he goes to jump because <laughs> he thought, you know, like I would and I grabbed the railing and launched my, I mean, instinctually launched myself up to the top to catch him. Yeah. Ripped the, the railing off the wall. <laughs> I tore, I don't know, I, I sprained half my body doing yeah. it, but I caught him. And, you know, there's a moment where you're proud of yourself, like, wow, I did that. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to pay <laughs> yeah. for this later. Yeah, like, oh, that hurt. Everything hurt. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I know. I caught everyone on, the top, on this hill, and he, he, like, lost his footing and then just, like, started to fall. And I jumped up the hill and just stopped him from falling headfirst down to the retaining wall. I was just like, ah. Oh, man. Yeah. You ever think about the stuff that you did when you were a kid, and you're like, I'm kind of lucky I didn't die. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, 100%. Yeah, there's a lot of things like that. Oh, like, I, sl- I almost sliced my big toe off going down a, uh, um, a a slide, like barefoot. Like, I broke my arm twice in the same year, same arm. Uh, let's see, what else? I, I stepped on a nail and got, like, all this- Didn't this, you get flesh-eating bacteria? Yeah, flesh-eating bacteria all the way. <laughs> and my dad's just like, walk it off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> my foot, like, That's blew up 80s, like a beach right? ball, dude. And I'm, like, trying to walk back from- Okay. the bus stop you know and just hurting Dude, the that, entire way that literally kills people oh, now now how are the two of you with so here's something that like i i find ourselves doing right now um and we're katrina and i are different right so he like he's he's finally starting to like walk a little bit right so he's definitely in that stage of looks like a drunk sailor everywhere he goes he's not <laughs> Isn't that stable. funny yeah it's not stable at all oh, right like they look they do look like drunk oh adults. it's hilarious my favorite right now when i i, I don't want to forget these memories because there's like there's moments already that i think are probably burned in my brain that i think are hilarious where you know you're le- he's getting to walk or so like you know 15 steps in a row is like a big deal of, like staying balanced you know so like we we stand apart from each other and then get a little bit further apart. Come on, come to mommy, come to daddy. Uh, and he's at that phase where he'll be walking and he's all excited to come towards daddy, loses balance and then go left and he just stays left yeah. you know, and, just, and just keeps going. Well, to, this is where I'm yeah, going now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just goes the other direction, you know what I'm saying? Because that's his balance. Took that's him a good sign, dude. He adapts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He so, adapts yeah. to ad- ad- adversity. But what I was going to ask is, so uh, so I'm like, I like to, um, I allow him to do things. And Katrina's like, why are you teaching him to do that? That's it's, it's like climb up and down the stairs or get off our, our bed and our bed's higher and taller than he is. Like, so my theory on this is like, listen, he's already trying to adventure and do this. I'm right here with him. Like, I want to teach him how to twist his body to get down, like to get down from the bed. That's the right attitude. Versus always catching him and going, no, 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 and saying no. And then the one time you're not there and he gets down and he doesn't know how to get down. No, that's the right attitude. Right. Like what you want to, if you have stairs in your house, you when when it's yeah, uh, crawl up appropriate, and down all the time. Yeah. you want to teach them how to do it properly. Not that you're encouraging them to do it all the time, but if you're not around, right. it's like, okay, okay, here's it's a good- It's bound e- to happen, I feel like. Here's right? a it's good bound e- to happen one day I'm not looking yes. at him and he's going to go up and down the stairs or he's going to get oh. off the bed. Yep. And he'll crawl out of his crib like before you know know it and yeah. like do some like death defying stuff Dude, it's okay it's, here's a great example it's like when you have a pool right so having a swimming pool can be very dangerous for children so as soon as you possibly can you teach them how to swim that's the safest possible thing you can do instead of you know not saying that you it's in replace of because i think you should do this as well but it's not like it's like comparing it to fencing the the pool off completely and being like okay we're safe right teach them how to right, how to right. swim or if you have a gun in the home that's another one once they get old enough, you teach them how to operate it. You teach them gun safety. Those things statistically are far better in terms of safety and risk than the you know the other stuff. But mm-hmm. you know, you're, you're as a kid, it's really the most dangerous time is teenage years because they have a certain level of freedom, and you're not around all the time, right? You got to let them go do their thing. And I think when I was a kid. The most stupid stuff that I did that right now makes my skin crawl was when I was a teenager and maybe early 20s. It's, you know, the frontal lobe is not fully developed. You got, you're full of testosterone and you literally don't understand, you just don't understand danger. You think you can do whatever you want. I think the way I drove when I first got my license, the things oh, yeah. I did in my car. Oh my God. I can't even believe. Like, what an idiot I was. Oh, I know, dude. I, I was actually thinking about that because we went up to this like place up in uh, Ponderosa, where I live. But, and uh, there's like a couple trails that are like dirt roads off. And so my kids are now in like kind of, they were in this outdoor program, which was really cool. They'd like teach them all the stuff about like nature and all this 
but I just remember when I got my license, like, because it's not a well-traveled road, like I would, I would take this little Honda Civic and just like blaze through there and like do fishtails and everything. And like, there's, there's hikers like on, on these trails, dude. And I was like blazing, like I was Dukes of Hazard, you know, <laughs> this thing, like, what was I doing? We used to play this and this is terrible. I hate admitting this, but I did it and I was stupid. We used to do, we play chicken in the car where you go down a dark road <laughs> And you turn off the headlights. Oh, yeah, dude. And you wait for the first guy to be like, turn the headlights on. Oh, yeah. And literally, you're driving in pitch black. You can't see what's going on. Yeah, we used to race and do stupid shit. Oh, my God. uh, Oh, I grew up in the valley where, like, the the fog is, like, crazy. And it was, like, a a thing that when that fog rolled in during that season, like, you race in the fog. You can't see the end of your hood. And so it's like, stupid. we thought it's a great idea to be passing each other on two-lane roads. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, my yeah. God. And, that, and when it was, it, so it, dumb. it turned into a thing, too, of like, who had the biggest balls? Who could pass three, four, five cars without getting back over in the right lane in this fog? Yeah. It did shit like that. I was just, I think back and I go like, what in the hell? Bro, yeah, cool. tes- tes- lots of testosterone without a fully developed frontal lobe is a, <laughs> is a recipe a, for disaster. Is that is bad a, news. That bears. is a risky situation. Yeah. It's funny how like, like parents or dads especially are like, they fear, oh my God, I'm going to have a daughter. Oh man, I'm really you know worried. And you know, she's going to be a teenager. It's going to be so hard. The truth is, teenage boys. Oh, yeah. You have a teenage boy. You need to be careful. That gets way too underplayed. Way, way yeah. too underplayed. Yeah, it's just, oh, man, it's so funny. Just like, uh, you know that song, uh, Teenagers Scare the Living Shit Out of Me? It's so applicable. <laughs> yes. Teenagers Scare the Living Shit Out of Me. We're, we're old guys now, yeah. aren't we? Yeah, yeah. It's, it, I understand it now. Damn teenagers. Hey, yeah. have, have you, I know, Justin, you're the big Joe Rogan listener. Have you? Are you listening to Spotify now? Because he's now officially over there, right? Yeah, I did. I was listening to the one with him and Duncan Trussell. That's like his first first one that didn't uh, you have Miley Cyrus on uh, yeah, I'm not gonna listen to that hold on a second. can I ask you guys a question mm. why does what Miley- does she have to say that's interesting well listen why <laughs> first okay, of all. if you listen to the pod don't look at her just listen to her voice uh, why does she sound like a an old waitress yeah, at a yeah. diner like hey yeah yeah you, you want that lumberjack slam I got it for you in the back <laughs> her, her voice sounds like she's yeah. been smoking a pack of cigarettes yeah, yeah. a day for the last I <laughs> came in like a wrecking ball 15 years <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. did it you wrecked, he- wrecked havoc on your your voice did you see the 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 controversy around that is it okay no. so i know what uh-huh. you're gonna bring up is that true yep it is true yeah so they basically I, thought, I wasn't sure if it was like a conspiracy thing because supposedly his con, some of his like really hardcore conservative uh guest and then like his alex jones kind of like people they all of a sudden there's like x oh, amount of episodes that i saw that disappeared they, they, they didn't post them michaela P- peterson right yeah michaela peterson's episode is not is taken down which yeah i, I didn't listen to her show yeah i didn't listen to her show so i don't know why but jordan peterson's episodes are in right are they yeah I'm okay sure okay okay well that's all right then. yeah i don't know i think it yeah definitely alex jones and then uh what's that one other controversial guy um Oh, me, uh, me, uh, Milo Yiannopoulos. Sure. Yeah, yeah, Yiannopoulos. Yeah, so yeah. those two for sure. Because I, yeah, and I think too, like being bought, I'm sure there's conditions. Right. Right. So, like, uh, that, as much as he doesn't want to hype it up and say that it's like, you know, like, well, I have uh, autonomous, you know, you don't have like full autonomy when somebody buys you for that much money. Well, I, and so I, I was, this is, I'm, I'm glad you went this direction because I'm curious to your guys' opinion on like, are you, are you pro it? Are you anti it? Like, it's his show. Yeah. Well, he, he obviously agreed to it. That's how I feel too. It's, yeah. and, and think about that. And this is the way I, I look at it. Like, what He's if like, I don't like to be censored? We'll give you half a billion well, dollars. I mean, yeah. I'm, I mean, okay, want. just a little bit though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just take a little off the censor top. light. Okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, imagine, imagine that uh, we're Spotify, right? My Pump Media is Spotify, and we're at a place where we're acquiring talent. We look for other fitness professionals that sure. have a show that we lo- and we love ninety eight percent of everything they're doing, and we want to acquire them. We're like. You know what? We're gonna pay this person, you know, a few, you know, hundred million dollars to come over here. But let's make sure they leave out that episode that we didn't like they did, and this one that they did really because uh, it doesn't really align with the things that we talk right. about. I mean, you think? I feel like you would do that, yeah, yeah. or somewhat. You know what I'm saying? It's your channel. You pay. You're paying. Now for put it. yourself. Let's do this for a second. Hmm. Let's play a game here. Uh, and of course, this is easy to do because it's not happening to us. So I'm sure. <laughs> our, I'm sure our virtue is gonna come out here. But oh yeah, for let's sure. just say that that happened to us in a in a big company said hey we want to pay you tons and tons of money we're going to bring all your episodes on but these are the ep- these episodes we're not going to put yeah, on yeah like not joe Donner. so we're going to send yeah we're going to well that <laughs> oh, one really like, that one yeah, that's yeah, fine, fine. No they're problem. going to they're going to censor us to some extent like part of me viscerally re- reacts anytime somebody tries to censor me for anything yeah 
So I don't know. How I would get, you? I guess it depends for me. I guess I, I'm on la- which episodes? Yeah, yeah. Because uh, personally, but I'm all la- the time you said uh, group exercise must die. I don't know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, that's yeah. got to stay. Yeah. Beach that's Body's gotta... a big sponsor of ours. So <laughs> you guys, uh, we're gonna have to get rid of all these. <laughs> <laughs> what? You will see. Okay, that I couldn't do that, right? Because then I would feel like I'm selling my soul. But if there was certain things that like we got into that I don't know, like that it would I don't know. It, it would have to be. Uh, I'd have to see which ones it was for it to, to really bother me. Because if you cut out some things that were like, that we were just over the top at the beginning, we were so bad. Like, we were so bad. <laughs> and if they're like, <laughs> if we don't want to do anything before episode 200, I'd be like, okay, I'm okay with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like we weren't even there yet. You know, <laughs> yeah. we were just experimenting. You can make it, ex- you can make it like those never existed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How much do we need Ooh, to pay you? Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I'm, I'm okay with that. That's, that's great. Yeah, I guess it would be, I guess it would be weird. Like, I think maybe, um, where it would get to me is like, like, imagine this, and this is probably more likely that if that were to happen, we're, we're playing this weird game, right? That doesn't exist, but okay. We get someone signs us and they go like, uh, you know, there's uh, 17 episodes where you guys mentioned God or you uh, interviewed a, uh, or are you interviewed a priest that we're going to go ahead and just pull all that off. Oh mm. uh, yeah. That, that would, that I would, would, would have problems with that. Right, right. That would, that would, I would have a problem with that. It depends. I, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it, it does depend. You but know, if there was ones where they're like, here are all the episodes where you guys talked about doing drugs in your past. Um, we're going to go ahead and eliminate all that. I'd be like, okay, it's probably good. There's 15 episodes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's 15 episodes left. Out of a thousand five hundred. Yeah, yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Episode yeah. like that, that'd be like, uh, okay, I can, that's probably a good idea, actually. Yeah, you know, so here's, hmm. the, here's the unintended consequence of that. Here's the inadvertent, you know, consequences of when, you know, because Spotify is a company and all they really care about is probably, right? I'm sure all they care about is let's get listeners, let's make money. Let's be a successful company, which most companies, that's your number one priority, right? Yeah, Aside, yeah. And you want to do it in your whatever your way is, or, but ultimately you want to succeed. But here's the unintended consequence of that. Look at the people that they cut out, cut out right? Uh, what's his name? Jo- Alex Jones, for example. Yeah. He's like the biggest peddler of conspiracy theories that exist. Right. His most ardent, his most ardent followers, the people who follow him the most, all you're doing is reinforcing their beliefs. That's all you're doing. Yeah. When you censor someone like that, yeah. you just strengthen yeah. their idea that, oh, they're blocking the truth. Yeah, yeah the man's and, against him. And the government. It's exactly what happened. This is why censorship, you have to be very careful because once you start to censor things, yeah. oftentimes you strengthen them. Well, his ratings went through the roof because it, it, they had to move him off all these platforms into his own website. So it's like his numbers started to shoot up because it's like, well, we really want to know what he has to say now. Yeah, yeah, I know. You totally. know, it's, just, it's hilarious to me. If you give him, you give him so much more power and weight uh, behind that w- w- Dude, when you censor them. If you, again, if you believe in a conspiracy, let's say you think, uh, you know, vaccines <clears throat> are a government strategy to inject us with microchips and they're all bad or whatever. Let's just say you believe that. And then any, and then when they, when they censor videos that may, maybe they think that it, the videos are, are giving out misleading information on vaccine or whatever reason, right? Too controversial. Yeah. But they censor those videos. You who believe that, do you think you're going to believe it less or more? Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. You know what I'm saying? You so know, it's, a, it's a game. You got to be speaking careful. Speaking of censorship, what what happened over in Australia? That oh, lady dude. got arrested. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is it's a weird, interesting. A, okay, so it, get, I think I read the article I right. That. Right, so she she did she tried to organize a protest on Facebook, basically. So okay, this against is, the lockdowns. So in Australia, I've had people messaging me from Australia because I don't understand. Uh, I know they're considered a free country, but they don't have. In their constitution, speech is not protected like it is in America. It doesn't sound very. Funny, and, and by the way, in uh, America is one of the one of the, one of the few countries that has it explicitly protected that speech. Yeah. That you can't censor speech, it's a which rare is thing. I think is a very good thing. Along with the Second Amendment, that's a very unique, uh, you know, um, protection that we have. But apparently, so the way Australia works is different regions can make pass certain laws. This segment of Australia, Victoria. Um, they have very, very strict lockdown rules, very strict. And what she did, this is to my understanding, she posted a, it, it's basically it, to organize a protest against the lockdown. So she said, hey, no, nothing like violent, nothing like that. Just basically, we're going to organize to protest the lockdown. It's a pregnant mm-hmm. woman. Yeah. The cops showed up at her house yeah. and arrested her in front of her kids an hour before she was supposed to get an ultrasound, all caught on camera. So this has become a huge, like, big thing. Mm. Scary precedent. Scary. I mean, I know that's not America, but could you imagine if someone tried to do that here? Oh, my Arrest God. you for posting? 
yeah. something on Facebook. Yeah, it's wild. That's it's very invasive. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. and it, I don't know their politics over there, so I don't know how supportive or, or unsupportive people are of it. Yeah. But from from someone like myself, sta- you know, over here, and I see something like that, I couldn't imagine cops oh. showing up and be like, you did a post on Facebook, we're going to arrest you. But like, excuse me. This is you said in Victoria. Is that the name of the place? Yeah. So that's like the they're they're like the California of Australia over there. I don't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I feel like that. Yeah, we're probably we're probably as extreme that direction. I feel like that, and then any other state in our country. Maybe, but I, we <laughs> or were, maybe New York. Who else do you think? Uh, yeah, our leaders are anyway. Yeah, to our, in, for our politics, but they would uh, till till now. I mean, I haven't seen this yet. Where you get arrested for doing a post? Yeah. You know, I mean, in fact, we protect protests here. You know, we saw, we've seen protests protests during lockdown here in the U.S. and uh, they were allowed to go on, which I think you should. You yeah. see that New York opened up gyms. Did you see that's happening? Yeah, that's good. Good, yeah, good, yeah. good. But not us though, huh? Mm. No, man. I mean, you know, that Gavin guy, he's just... Uh, what, he's, are we at, what are we at now? How many, mo- how many months are we for like gyms being closed here? I don't know. It's been a while. I think you can work out in gyms if they do it outside with certain things. I don't know. I reached out to uh, our buddy Adam Sedlak over at uh, UFC gyms to see, and I think we're going to have him come on and talk because I'm curious to what they're going through. I know they've been trying to do all kinds of things. I know he did a post not that long ago where he seems- He wants the recall. He was really pissed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think he was really, really pissed. Uh, and, and I think it's because they're trying to do all these different things to try and abide by the rules. And I think they're getting shut down or told no every, all these. What days. a sad precedence because yeah. if, for anybody like, okay, I'm, I'm a huge historian when it comes to fitness and especially resistance training, right? I love the history of it. California was the Mecca. This is, I mean, we weren't the original place to have gymnasiums. I think the East coast had the first ones, but California is what really popularized you know, lifting weights. We popularize the, hel- the health clubs, you know, mm-hmm. like it's a part of the, of California culture yeah. to work out. And they're, they're what they're doing right now, whether you believe it's good or bad, I'm not going to make that argument, but it's what, what they are doing is completely decimating and destroying an entire industry. Like they are, yeah. They are hammered more than any other industry I can think of. Uh, is, Have is you guys seen is- videos of what L.A. looks like now? No. Oh, my God. It is really bad. Why? Oh, uh, just it, it. Beforehand, we had a really big problem here in California with homeless encampments. Oh. And, you know, and so with, with the mass exodus of, you know, businesses and people leaving, it's it's just turned into like a complete wasteland. Oh, man. Yeah. It's just it's just you got to you got to really evaluate all these things and these policies and just, you know, look at, well, you know, what's happening as a result of it. I mean, as much as you want to stay safe, you got to evaluate everything. Yeah, I, I, I 100% agree. Hey, did you, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast before, just to make it here, uh, a, a turn here, but um, did you guys know that you can increase your iron intake by cooking on cast iron skillets? Yeah. Did you guys know that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Isn't that, yeah. That's, that's pretty cool, right? No, that was so, one, of, one of the things that we that we did for Katrina when she was pregnant yeah. was we we cooked the- Was cook, she anemic Courtney at all? turned me on to that. Um, no, they, I think at one point she she tested like she was borderline. Yeah, that's um, common with pregnancy. It is, it is, mm-hmm. right? Which I thought was really weird because her diet, she eats a really high protein diet, but that was like one of the things that we started doing. Like we we always already, you know, we eat meat on a very regular basis, you know, Um and we just said, okay, we'll just start putting it on the cast iron instead of doing it on the barbecue for her to hopefully bump some of her iron yeah, up. Yeah, because Jessica, borderline anemia, and you can tell she'll get like out of breath or, you know, like lose her energy or whatever. And so she had to supplement with some iron, but supplementing with iron can be kind of nasty. It can cause like gastro issues. And um, so it's always better to get it from food. So the organ meats is one thing, uh, but she's pretty uh, adverse to organ meats. They don't taste. <laughs> You know, I mean, most people don't like liver to begin with. Try and give liver to a pregnant woman, and it's it's a it's a. I, I'm like sitting there. Try, I feel like those old movies really where testing your sales skills. Huh? Oh, dude, I feel like those old movies where you like mom is giving their kid like you know cod liver oil on the spoon. Like, it's like no. Nah. I'm like I'm like, like making into an airplane. I'm, yeah, exactly. I'm like, honey, you got to eat this liver. I'm like making it with bacon. I'm like, imagine it's something. I'm playing all these tricks. She's like, Ooh. are you privy to like is is the iron uh, breakdown different in like grass fed beef versus regular? Like I know like the omega profile, right, or the fatty acid profile is uh, is different. Typically, but- the grass fed meats are higher in certain nutrients. Uh, B vitamins may be higher in grass fed. It's not a huge difference, but if you eat meat a lot, 
then it does make a difference. Well, the biggest difference is the fatty acid profile. That's where you see yeah. the bigger difference, right? It's got less of the inflammatory fatty acids and more of it's got. A, it's actually okay. So grass fed meat has a very nice fatty acid profile. It really does. It's very balanced. Mm-hmm. Um, if you just eat good quality meat. So, but what we've been doing, we got those. Um, those fillets from Butcher Box, yeah. which are pretty good. I just cooked those up last night. Yeah, so she put them in the cast iron skillet, and what she does is she sears them on both sides, and then puts the whole skillet in the oven, mm-hmm. and they come out like perfect. Yeah, it's, absolutely it, perfect, it, dude. It's been life changing. Like, so when I was gone uh, on my uh, evacuation and all that kind of stuff, and coming back, it was like like our whole plan was to just like, we're just gonna cook everything at home. We missed home cooked meals. We were going out like all the time Mm. because we just, I mean, we had like a little tiny, uh, you know, we might've had a kitchen that just had like a burner and, or like a microwave. And so it's like, we're not gonna cook in this. And man, you feel the difference. You feel the difference when you can bring back quality into your diet and like, you know, just really manage that again. I feel so much better in my stomach. Even when you're trying to eat healthy and you eat out, it's still not the same because you don't know what oils they use. Right. And I had Brussels sprouts uh, the other day. And I mean, Brussels sprouts are, you know, pretty healthy. They, they affect me pretty well. I felt bad after I ate them. And I realized, I thought to my, they probably use the shitty oil mm-hmm. to cook them in. I'm sure they're not using ghee or butter. It's probably some, you know, weird vegetable oil. That's causing me to feel crappy. So, uh, you know. Hey, speak, speaking of our partners, I was uh, so right now we were putting together, and probably I don't know after this episode goes live, it'll, it won't be it won't be long after. You know, Rachel and Eli have been putting together like this little you know reel of all the partners that we work with. And they asked each of us to do like a little excerpt on each one of them, like someone say something real quick, like about all the partners and we were all in we were all separate, so we weren't together when we did this. And I thought it was really funny when I was going over the edit that when uh, it came to talking about chili pad that both Justin and I defaulted to the like saving marriage thing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> so right away I got a chuckle out of that. I was like, that must be of like a like serious contention in his house because it is in my house. Yes, too. it is, dude. <laughs> like, like the temperature thing is like a constant. I can, we can't be alone in that. Though. I hope not. I hope you know I don't feel I mean? like an asshole because I, know. <laughs> I was like, please tell me that the yeah. other there's other men out there that are wrestling with the same issue. Yeah, or, am I that self absorbed <laughs> about my own like climate, you know, here? I don't know. But uh yeah it's definitely Definitely something we always battle. So I felt like bringing well, that up. Well, men and women just they just feel different. You know, I think traditionally, unless they're pregnant, like uh, my wife, but it, traditionally they like it warmer. Men traditionally, you know, like it colder in the room. So that's for sure. It's Is not it, yeah, for me though. It's not even like I. It's like I have to. Or like it, yeah, I'll have or the worst get terrible sleep. I'll have yeah. terrible yeah. sleep. Yeah. I mean, I will. I'm talk. looking out for myself. Well, I'm sure your wife feels the same way. Yeah, you, on the cold side. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's where the contention is. Exactly. You yes. know what I'm saying? It's just like, and I'm like, you can wear sweats and bundle up. Yeah. Like I can only take so many sheets off and clothes off, and then I'm naked. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying so she slightly feels a breeze. You know, <laughs> like pro- across her like hair or anything. It's like ah, like throws the sheets uh, off. Yeah, like, yeah. I can't sleep. I can't. Marriage is basically a series of small like annoyances that mm. over the years. <laughs> become like big issues. You know what I'm saying? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, it's oh, like, yeah, yeah. It's like, 11, 12 years in here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it gets more intense. You ever do that? You look back on like a huge blowout fight and you're like, we fought over that? Like, really? Yeah, so funny you say, <laughs> so, so no. funny you say that because yesterday Katrina said, she goes, she goes, I love you. And we have this thing, I think I've talked about this before. Like, you know, if one of us says that, that, you know, we ask, what are you thinking about or what made you say that? And she goes, I was just thinking about this morning how how irritated I was with you. I was like, that's what made you say I love you right now? (laughs) She goes, yeah, because I just, I love that our relationship, like the things that, you know, irritate me or get frustrated, they're so not not a big deal at all. minuscule. Right, so what happened was, uh, it was like, I don't know, 6.30 or 7 o'clock in the morning, and I didn't sleep very well that night. Again, a temperature thing, actually. Uh, And, you know, Max has been getting up. He's been sleeping through the night, um, but we put him down at 730. So that now means like he is ready to wake up at six, you know, and I'm not up at six every morning. And so and right now she'll go get him and she'll like put him in the bed between us and just kind of let him play a little bit. And, you know, he'll lay down sometimes and have a bottle, but he's he's awake now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm like laying there and I'm like still trying to get like an extra half hour sleep. And he's like slapping me in the face. And, you know, and she's like talking, saying like, oh, get daddy. It's time for daddy to get up. This is that. Like, (laughs) and and I'm like, I roll over. So my back is to them. Like, just give me 30 minutes, please. (laughs) You know, and so. I was like, and she made some comment. I don't know what she said. And I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, dad's tired, right? 
And uh, she was like, yeah, mom's tired too, right? So I got tired. And that was it. That was all that was said. Uh, yes. And then the day goes. And then later on was when she said to me about, I love you. And she's like, no, nah, it's just... Those are the things that like we we have it about. It's like you know I get it. It's dude, that's all marriage, dude. And yeah. those things, but those things let so, some people allow those things to fester and turn it into like resentment. Just, yeah, yeah, it could it could easily turn into oh he doesn't consider my feelings. He doesn't think about how tired I am. Or right. you could think the same thing. Right. Why can't she just understand that I feel? And then it turns into a big you know big. Yeah. And it depends on the circumstances, the context, and how often. Yeah. You know what happens? Right. That's you have what, to make peace that you're both different people. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> like, you got to remember that. Dude, dude, Jessica. I'm not going to be like you. You're not going to be like me. Let's just be cool. That you. That's Dude, I swear to God, that's the key to success. Yes. Is that you just accept. Yeah. You just got to accept shit. Like, Jessica consistently has to tell me to put things away or in the right place. Yeah. Now, from my point of view, right, if I want to be all, like, pissy about it, mm-hmm. like, man, you're so, like... Who, who cares if it's four inches yeah. to the right it's tyrannical about or where this. it's supposed to go? You know, like <laughs> I put the salt shaker there. She says, move it five inches over there. Like, okay, what's the big deal? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Just who cares? Move it yourself. But in her, from her perspective, she's like, yeah, I do that a hundred times. Like a hundred times a day, yeah. I'm moving everything back to where it goes. I have to put the chair back in. I have to turn this. And so this becomes, this can become a thing. But basically with that particular thing, I think she's accepted that she'll just have to tell me. And I've accepted that she'll just tell me. Yeah. And, and I'm like, I'm not going to get irritated. I mean, I'll, maybe I'll get irritated, but I'm like, whatever. And then she'll well, if you've it. done a good, I think if you've done a good job of dating or courting before you get married, then you should have, or at least I believe, you should have like have learned all these things about a partner, and have, and just figured that it's a trade off and it's okay. Like that's the way I look at it, is like, okay, so you know, Katrina is you know the tomboy in her. She's not like the neatest you know person. For especially like girls tend to be neater than guys. Right. I'm definitely the the neater, clean person. And so it's like I can get frustrated with that all the time when she leaves her brush out or her side of the sink is a mess compared to mine. Like and, and at the beginning it would bother me. And then I'm like, wait a second, like she's also this badass chick that'll be working till midnight and then back up at five grinding and is extremely successful at anything. Yeah, you think of the positive stuff. Right. And yeah. I go like, would I rather have the the wife who, you know, is, stays home and actually makes the house immaculate all the time, but then she's not doing anything supportive financially or she's not a killer herself in business. And right. I can't have these great deep conversations like when I'm trying to work things out with business because she has that mind. Fuck no, I'd way rather have Dude, that. And so I remind myself of like normally if we, there's no dirt, there's no fun. Yeah. <laughs> that's uh, that's hey, my rule. Hey, dude, you ever be, you're, you hang out with old couples that have been married for a long time and you ever hear them bicker and say things to each other? Nobody takes anything personal. Yeah. They totally understand and accept each other and it's just the way it is. And you know what the irony of that is is when you accept each other, if the person is ever going to kind of change and t- it's usually from that perspective. It's never when they're getting hammered. You know what I mean? Oh, no. t- oh totally. And I, you know, to that point of talking about, I know she makes a conscious effort to to do things because she knows that's something yeah. that I want, and and yeah. vice versa, and things that I I probably annoy her in. I know that those are things that she, you know, okay, and it makes me want to help out more or do more to be better because of that, and that's the way you handle that shit. Yeah, I mean, you can look at it again, like it's it's about looking at more of the positives as consistently as you possibly can, because yeah. like there's always going to be those things, and and I remember somebody telling me like it's usually it's like th- it's only like three things that that cause like a divorce a lot of times for people, and that's the only things they focus on. Meanwhile, okay, well, tell me what was going good and what were all the positives. Oh, there's too many of those. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's all, it's these things though. And that's it. We're done. You know, <laughs> Dude, and that's what you focus you're on. You're trying to be with someone uh, for the rest of your life, right? That's the goal. And you're trying to do it while raising kids, paying bills, all extremely stressful. Yeah, yeah. And you're both fundamentally different. You're one's a male, one's a female, different experiences. You know, I mean, I couldn't. I, mean, I, I couldn't do that with you guys, you know, let alone another, you know, it's it's a difficult yeah, thing. Yeah. You got to, you, you, the acceptance part is so important. Otherwise you're screwed. Speaking of that, I got, uh, yesterday I did my first DILF wisdom, right? So we're, we're launching this little, right. yeah, we're kicking off this little series that we're going to do and we'll see if it gets legs and people enjoy it. It seemed like when we posted on, posted on Facebook, like, I don't know, a month or two ago and it's, uh, we got, a, I got a ton of response, uh, about this. And so, you know, I thought it'd be kind of cool to put this series together. We've, you know, the three of us have over the last, you know, six years developed a lot of relationships with other dads uh, in the space or even outside of our space that are very successful entrepreneurs. They're great dads. And 
I thought, oh, this would be kind of cool. Let's put together this little short series where I have a series of questions that I'll ask all of them, and then we'll, you know, we'll drip them out. I don't know. Once a month, we'll do these, or we'll put them on IG, and so people can watch. And yesterday, I had Brendan for the first one, so it's it. I, and I'm already, uh, I was already excited about it, but then after doing the first one, I'm like, oh, you know what? This is going to be interesting mm-hmm. because I'm going to try and stick to the same series of questions and ask all of them that. So hearing how they respond, I don't want to spoil it. We'll make let it leave it till people can listen to it. But you know, there's questions that I ask that you know, oh, I would have thought he would have answered totally different, or I wasn't ready for that, or hmm. you start to see how people parent because I get into some things like that, everything from nutrition to your partnership and you know how you navigate oh, to that, cool. bad habits that you might have had from your parents. Did they bleed into you being a dad? Like, so there's a lot of really cool questions that we nailed down, and it's going to be a cool little series. That's awesome. Nice. The first question is from the Francesca Marie. What exercises would you recommend for a client who is looking to strengthen their joints due to the fact that they had previous injuries that were related to sprains and or strains around the ankle and knee area? Mm. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's hard to give specific recommendations because we don't know why or how your those your knee is you know getting hurt and your ankle is getting hurt. But generally, um, you can do, I mean, honestly, general strengthening exercises are number one. So squats and lunges and your traditional strength training exercises done properly will do a lot to strengthen uh, the the muscles around the knee. And then as far as the ankle is concerned, um, I would work on both ankle mobility, but also calf exercises and exercises that strengthen the tibialis. And balance exercises to work on the muscles that stabilize uh, the ankle. But you know, I'm glad this is that this person is asking this question because that is the right question to ask. Uh, oftentimes, when people have a sprain or repeated sprains or injuries, mm-hmm. they think do less rather than do more of Let the right heal. stuff. Yeah, yeah, like oh, okay, my ankle always gets sprained. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna run anymore. I'm not gonna do that activity anymore. Rather than looking at the root cause, which typically is. Has to do with weakness. Has to do with imbalance. Well, this is really close to the the, the episode, the single topic episode we just did recently, where we talked about like knee issues, right? Like mm-hmm. normally, that's a, like if you are, if you're getting like sprains and things going on the knee, it, that's normally a sign of instability in the ankle and hip. So right away, I would look into like you know like Prime Pro. I would be doing movements for my ankle from Prime Pro. I'd be doing movements for my hip. Those in themselves will already start to create some strength and stability, right? If you're doing those the, all those movements properly. That'll help you. I also would recommend this person uh, train barefoot. Like, uh, you know, if you, uh, there a lot of times weak ankles also are weak feet. You know, you're, you don't have a great connection to the ground and your feet don't grip the ground. You, good chances you could be over pronating and issues there. So, barefoot training uh, would be great and like stability stuff. So, uh, I love to take, the situation like this, take somebody and the way we start our workout after we've done our hip mobility, ankle mobility, the first exercise might be something like a walking lunge. So you dress like what Sal is saying, traditional strength training, and then I'll do it with like stability and barefoot. So I'll have them barefoot, not super heavy or anything like that because we're more about mechanics and they'll be walking across the the grass and as they're walking, they they do a, a nice big lunge and then they stabilize and they're bare and they're barefoot, remember, and then they stabilize and lunge again, then stabilize and lunge again. Yeah, but they mm-hmm. gotta do it right though, because if their feet are weak and they go barefoot, they'll just pronate oh, or yeah. supinate. You gotta really start slow and, and and consider that that triangle base of support. So you have that uh that pressure that's evenly distributed. So from your big toe to your your pinky toe to uh the tongue of your shoe, basically you want to be able to be able to apply pressure equally and distribute that throughout your feet and have strength in that. So, you know, you're not tilting one, you know, side to too much versus the other, but also like strengthening the forefoot. So being able to elevate your heel, uh, you know, as you lunge and then have stability in that and also doing toe squats and things like that as well. So, uh, just that way, you know, you're, you're, you're a little bit more comfortable, uh, with your, with your, uh, anything you're doing as far as your, your lower extremities and you have stability and support with that. There's a great exercise to both your points right there. Right. So you're right, Sal, if you be careful, if you go barefoot, that you can overpronate. I mean, that's also why I throw the stability in there, right? So it's not about weight, it's about form. If you're barefoot and you balance and you stabilize uh, between each lunge, it's hard to stabilize if you overpronate and you and you or you're off. So that's the reason for that. <clears throat> and then there's a specific exercise I like to do for this. 
And uh, and I think I've, I think I showed this on my Instagram a long time ago. Uh, if you're curious about it, maybe I'll do it again. I'll try and describe it on on the podcast as best as I can. So Justin was talking about. Uh, you know the the triangle, right? So you have the the two points on your foot. So if so it's my, like the ball of the foot and the other side of the forefoot, and then the heel, right? The right. triangle. Yeah. So there's the triangle. So you're you're trying to think of that. So one of the things you can do. So you take a quarter and you put it underneath uh, the the fat pad. So the the top of the the, the triangle, right? And on the forefoot. And when you when you rise up to do calf raises, the thing you want to watch for, and the the quarter is really just to give you feedback. You're you're, you're trying to think. I want to push through that part of my foot. That's the whole point of the quarter being there is just giving you feedback. So you drive up through the quarter. And when you do that, people that over pronate or have issues, weak ankles, they'll typically break out. So when they go do a calf raise, they, they stand up on their tippy toes and then their ankles break out to the side. And you want to try and fight that and keep them neutral. So, and, and Justin alluded to doing like tippy toe squats. This is the regression before I take someone on tippy toe squats mm-hmm. because if you go right up on your tippy toes you, and you over pronate, you have weak You're compensating. That's not a good idea. Right. You'll, you'll break out. So, what you do is you teach somebody to rise up on the heels, keep their heels in a neutral position, don't allow it to break out. Once they understand what they're trying to do there, then the progression to that is the tippy toe squats that Justin, okay, now I know how to raise up on my tippy toes. I can keep my ankles neutral, not allowing them to break out. They're staying neutral and stable. Okay, now to progress that, I can drop down into a squat while I stay on my tippy toes. Yeah, it's strength and stability, uh, which is controlled by muscle, is what keeps your joints uh, safe and healthy. I mean, when I was a uh, personal story, right? When I was 14, I dislocated my kneecap on my left leg. And uh, uh, part of the rehab uh, uh, was I went to a physical therapist and she had me do some very basic strengthening exercises. It was like a hip bridge. Um, and, a, and a couple other movements, and it helped, but it didn't fully help. And I remember I used to have to wear this brace with two hinges on the sides of the knee. And when I didn't wear it, my knee just felt very unstable. Well, finally one day I got fed up. I mean, I did this for months, and finally I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to go to the gym and work out. Whatever happens, happens. And I started squatting. I started doing squats, and within weeks my knee was back to normal because I got it stronger. Now, if you want – more specific instruction because, again, it depends on who we're talking to. These are general answers. We have something called the MAPS Prime Bundle. And and what you do is you go in there. It's got two programs. And there's assessments. You take the assessments, and then you can determine for yourself what specific movements are going to help you best because here's the thing with strengthening and stability and mobility. One big piece of that is it needs to be individualized. If you do the wrong mobility movement – not only can it largely be a waste of time sometimes, you might actually be making things worse depending on what your problem yeah. is. So it's really important that you do a self-assessment, which, again, that Prime Bundle's got two programs, and both of them have self-assessments. Look at your ankles. Look at your hips. Those are the things that tend to cause issues with the knee. Of course, you already said the ankle, so look at the ankle. Look at the feet. Do those self-assessment protocols in there, and then apply the right exercises for your body. You'll be blown away at how fast your joints start to feel stable and how how quickly you start to eliminate the risk of injury, or at least the one that yeah. you used to have. The more specific you can be, the better. And to be able to prioritize that now and not just kind of mask over it by getting back into your normal routine and workout and addressing it now while you have the opportunity, uh, you're going to benefit from that you know, long term. Next question is from Abby Perler. When training athletes, what are your go-to exercises and mobility drills? Oh, boy. Um, (laughs) It's complex. It depends on the sport, right? Uh, You're definitely going to do mobility for the whole body because you want to maintain strength in in, far ranges of motion. Sports challenges your body in ways that are often unpredictable, right? So in the gym, everything's very controlled. You know what a squat looks like. You know what an overhead press looks like. And you can get strong in that range of motion. But when you're playing a sport, oftentimes you have to reach outside of those ranges of motion and twist and do things explosively. Mm -hmm. And this is where injury tends to occur. So uh, mobility work, whole body mobility work is a must for almost every single athlete. I mentioned earlier in in the first question, the prime bundle, um, that would be uh, appropriate for athletes. Yeah, that's the. I mean, that's the first place to start. And you're right. Like, there's so many more variables with the athletes that if you're just training somebody in the gym to get results and get muscular, and uh, you know, it's pretty controlled. That's one thing. But you know, in terms of any athlete, you really have to assess their overall movement. 
in their ability to to move properly and stabilize properly yeah. and to be able to have strength and control and so uh really like that is the that's the prerequisite to, to any uh pursuit athletic wise you have to be able to have like ultimate control of your body uh because you are going to be doing things that are going to ramp up more explosively uh and you have to be able to stabilize just as uh intensely as you are able to then explosively uh you know produce that kind of force well it's hard to answer something like this because every athlete's going to be different mm -hmm. uh training a, a swimmer versus a wrestler versus a basketball player versus a football player the type of drills that you're doing with them are going to be unique to each of them it's right? even different from one football player Ex to the next. exactly yeah. right so it's really hard to give but i will give you some uh, somewhat of a specific answer that i think is common that uh, i would focus on with almost all athletes um and that's hip stuff Mm. Um, both good hip mobility and control and then power and strength in your hips. Uh, just because almost all sports uh, require a lot of power to come from there. I don't care what you're doing. Having powerful hips yeah. is going to transfer over to almost any sport that you play. Yeah, and so. I, I would throw core in there because when we're talking about hips from an athletic standpoint, we're talking about the lumbo, pelvic, hip area, which includes the muscles that stabilize the hips, which is the, the muscles of the core. And if you don't have good, stable, strong core muscles, but you have very powerful hip muscles, um, you're, you're asking. Gonna blow out. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna definitely uh, hurt yourself. So, those are the, some of the things you might want to focus on. I agree 100 uh, percent with Adam. It does depend on the person, and you know, it also depends on where they are at their in terms of how long they've been playing sports and their age. I mean, it, you know, early on, it's very appropriate to just build general strength, right? Yeah. If you have a younger athlete and they just got started in sports. Um, you want to build general strength, uh, squats and deadlifts and overhead presses and rows and stuff that we recommend uh, to most people. As they become more advanced, as the sports become more specific, then the exercises start to become more specific. Whereas a full squat might have been perfectly appropriate for general strength, a half or quarter squat might be better with an athlete who's, let's say, college age, who now is looking for a particular type of explosive power out of, a, you know, to jump or whatever. Well, I think of uh, the world class uh, coaches that have been on our show and have talked about like how you know they would build the ultimate athlete and how you know general GPP. I, I forget the acronym for that, but it's general play and and uh, progression. I don't mm -hmm. know what the last one is, but uh, basically it's it's overall understanding of the body you know we talk about proprioception a bit about you know understanding where you are in terms of space and and being able to react appropriately uh, but really having like that ultimate understanding of you know what the movement how to navigate in every aspect of that movement is the the first thing to really build yep. off of and then after that we start to then build up the base the base strength and and so this is where we get into more of the uh you know bi-loaded uh type of of, of exercises well the general answer would be mass performance. I mean, that's we address yeah. that in that. So if it, if because we don't know who this exact athlete is, what we're training for, and all the specifics about them, it's hard to answer like a really good detailed question for this person. But the generic answer is, you know, a maps performance would be the foundation. The all the movements and the things in there where uh, we hit all the points of, that everybody's making and addressing, and then beyond that is when it gets really specific, right? So. That uh, any person, any athlete would would definitely get benefit by going through performance, and then when they get the next level of benefit would be more specific to that person and their sport. But generally speaking, the things that we're all everything from core to unilateral work to hip stuff, everything we're talking about, all of that is incorporated in you know, proprioception. All that's incorporated. Uh, in plyometrics, all oh, that's yeah. incorporated. We took all in that into account when we were building and drafting that because you want to like take those those fundamental elements of what produces a, a, an awesome athlete, and that's you know to be able to have that foundational strength and explosive strength, and be able to have strength in multiple directions of movement, and then have uh, you know power and, and power and explosivity, but under control, and then also have that endurance and that gas tank that's going to carry you through uh, you know any of those endeavors. Yeah, so yeah, if you were to follow uh, like mass performance is the I, I would say uh, the, the best programmed general athletic workout you're going to find um, and if you were to follow it alongside specific drills that your coach is having you do right now you've got yourself uh, a great program uh, it also has mobility in it but like just to give you a breakdown right um, and this is kind of how we put we wrote maps performance if you're training yourself and you're an athlete or if you're a trainer training athletes 
You want to work on maximal strength. That's probably where you want to start. Then you start to move through multiplanar strength, right? Getting the person to not just be strong, but to be strong in different directions. You want to work on explosive power. That's extremely important in almost every sport I can think of. Being able to control your strength explosively uh, will just make you a better athlete. And then ultimately, of course, you want to have some stamina. There's always a stamina element with most sports that I can think of. Even an explosive sport, sport like football, that where they stop consistently and they do plays, you need to be able to repeat that over and over and over again. So there's definitely a stamina yeah. component. And 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 to to you know add to that just a bit because I've gotten a lot of questions from athletes about their specific sport, how they would use maps performance. So on the mobility days is really where you want to be able to upkeep your your skills training. So every sport has specificity to it in terms of like movements that you know are really specific to that sport. And to be able to keep and sharpen those skills is very important. Uh, so to add those within those mobility days, I would highly suggest while you're also doing the weight training. Next question is from Nathaniel L. Watson. Have you had a hernia and what is the best way to avoid them? Mm. Justin, you have, haven't you? I've never had one. Neither have I. <sighs> yeah, I, yeah, I did. And I don't, I mean, for me, it was uh, just excessively, I, I was picking I wasn't deadlifting. Like I wasn't even uh, introduced to deadlifting uh, uh, until later on in, in terms of. Uh, I thought you, know, you said this was sexually transmitted. No, that's <laughs> no, not. that was the other thing you had. Oh, that was yeah, the other that thing. was got the, that was the that. lump. Oh, uh, <laughs> never mind. But uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but I didn't have it. It wasn't like an, an extreme one. Sometimes you need surgery for this, and like so, basically, like your intestines almost pushing its way out, right? Mm. And so, it's not something to mess with. Obviously, you need to you know rest and recover and 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 allow your body to you know fully like heal but uh yeah for me it was just more of a a, a pressing thing where i knew that uh yeah like there it was very painful it was a very painful experience for me and it was like it was i'm pretty sure it was due to improper uh technique lifting something super heavy and awkward yeah so okay so hernia is essentially when an organ or sometimes deep muscles poke through your, usually the core muscles of your body. So intestines can come through that. Your stomach can come through that. And so if you think of your core, right, there's layers of core muscles and they surround your internal organs and they act like a shield and they stabilize the body. Well, sometimes there's a tear uh, that can happen and the organs can poke through that. And if it's not, you know, treated, sometimes it can continue to get worse. And like Justin said, oftentimes, it requires surgery. Believe it or not, some of the more common reasons why people get hernias, uh, of course, we all know about lifting improperly, right? Straining. Constipation. Constipation causes hernias yeah. for a lot of people, that constant pushing and straining. Pushing that big old log out. <laughs> Weakness, uh, weak core muscles. Of course, it's usually in combination with weak core muscles. Another way people get hernias, coughing or sneezing. So you got weak core muscles. Mm. You might be overweight on top of it. And then you cough or sneeze and then you get a tear and stuff pokes out. Um, overweight, being overweight is, can happen, as, uh, can do this as well, especially in men because we carry uh, more visceral body fat than women do. So visceral body fat is the body fat that is deep. It surrounds the organs and it tends to be under muscle. So it's like you know, do you guys ever have a, a man in your family, uncle or whatever, where they get this big belly, but then you touch the belly and it's hard? Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah. what the hell? You know, I had an uncle like that. Like he, had a, <laughs> he had a big old belly. Rock with, solid Buddha belly. Yeah, he'd eat all these like bowls of pasta and he'd be like, but it's not fat. Come here. And he'd, you'd hit it and you'd be like, why is it all like hard? <laughs> it's because the fat was underneath the muscle and it was pushing everything out. And what happens when that happens is uh, think, of a, um, think of your hamstrings, for example. Imagine putting your hamstrings in an extreme stretch. How strong are your hamstrings in that extreme stretch? None. They're very weak. When your core muscles are pushed out and stretched, they lose strength. Look, my, right now my wife's going through this. She's pregnant, third trimester. Her The baby is growing. This has to happen uh, through in pregnancy. It's a normal process. But because her core muscles are so stretched out, she has very little core stability compared to how she had before. So this happens when people are overweight, and then you throw on top of that, you go lift something, or you cough, or you sneeze, or you're constipated. Now you have a problem. So best ways to avoid a hernia, uh, have good digestion, regular bowel movements that you don't struggle or strain. 
uh, to pass. Uh, I hear you laughing, Justin. I'm laughing because I'm sure that was a factor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thinking yeah. back, yeah. Yeah. I so they have the best diet. There's that. Make sure your body weight is appropriate, allowing yourself to get really overweight. People who are really overweight have a much, much higher rate of hernias than people who aren't. So maintain a healthy body weight. And then when you work out and lift, uh, make sure you have good core stability. But if you, here's the deal, okay? Because I've had people tell me, that they're afraid to lift heavy because they don't want to get a hernia. Yeah, if you lift heavy like an idiot, yeah. if you if it's like saying I'm hurt, I'm scared to hurt my back if I lift weights. Yeah, if you have bad form, if you're not worried about mobility and stability, and you just go lift ha- haphazardly, the risk is high. Same thing with a hernia. If you lift weights properly, controlled, stable, good core stability, the risk of hernia is very low. And not only that, but because you're lifting weights properly your risk of hernia long-term is lower. Yeah. So because you're fit, your risk of hernia is a, a, a lot lower. Now, you do see this sometimes in advanced lifters, but you're talking about extreme uh, examples. It's like, um, uh, you know, it'd be like a, a, a car, you know, twisting its axle in half. Like, when does that happen? Oh, yeah, right. if you put 600 horsepower... Yeah, I was going to say, I was just talking about this with like those nitro drag racers, right? Mm-hmm. Like when they can't, they can't even maintain the engine. It's just so much uh, explosive pressure internally there that it's like, it's hard to to manage it. So yeah, you don't want to look at the extremes and then be afraid of what ha- might happen at the extremes. I mean, um, if you really want to get scared, you know, something that can happen to Olympic lifters, <laughs> oh my God, this is legit. This. Like yeah. they generate so much force and power that they've actually, some of them have actually blown tube sock. Their yeah, their insides out of their their butt. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this it, has actually it's, happened. It's happened. You yeah. know, and so so those are extremes. Don't YouTube that. But if yeah, please don't look that up. I did that once. It was terrible. Yeah. But you know, if you work out properly, good stability, good form, the way that we promote all the time on the podcast. Um, if you if you have a healthy diet, you're not super constipated. Um, your your risk of her- hernia is lower. Than somebody who just doesn't do anything at all and just lives the you know the, the the standard American life. Next question is from Ty Leash. Can you guys talk about how deodorants, shampoos, etc., can adversely affect our bodies, and what brands you guys recommend? Dude, mm. I just read an article. Mm, we've been thinking about this. This is cool. This question just came out, right? I just read an article about this. It was a it was an article. Actually, it was a it was a case study. Um, of this boy who was com- who went to the doctor because he had um, really bad gynecomastia. So gynecomastia is the development of breast tissue in uh, men or boys. Now, it's not super uncommon for a teenage boy to develop some gynecomastia. This happens because Hormone they get levels. this, yeah, their testosterone levels spike up and some of that testosterone gets converted to estrogen. So having a little bit of that, super normal. Actually, most teenage boys will have a little bit of it. But this kid apparently had a lot of it, and they couldn't figure out you know, what was going on. And the doctor was actually wise enough to look at the, the products that the kid was using to wash his hair with, his soaps, mm. and his acne washes and stuff. Really? They did, and they, they, they took them all out, and the gynecomastia went down. And that's because a lot of these chemicals that are in cleaning products, because we don't think of our skin as an organ. It's actually the largest organ in the body. Yeah. We also don't think that stuff we put on our skin will actually get absorbed and affect you know affect the insides of our body, but it does. Cosmetics, shampoos, soaps, lotions, um, things you put on your body, things you put in your body, feminine uh, hygiene products like tampons and you know maxi pads. Those things can sometimes have chemicals in them, and over time they do get you absorbed by the body. Sunscreens is another one, and a lot of these chemicals act like weak hormones in the body. Uh, they're called xenoestrogens. And that means that they, the way that they're shaped, that they can actually affect hormone receptors in the body as if they were almost like a hormone. Maybe not quite nearly as powerful, but over time you keep rubbing this stuff all over your skin or you wear makeup every day or whatever, slowly you start yeah. to see these hormonal really effects. Really, it's the volume, right? It, it, it's it's that long-term exposure to these chemicals. It's not like uh, you know the, the one-offs are going to do that much damage, uh, but if you start to think about all these different products and like how they all have different chemicals and they all interact with your with your body, it's just a matter of time to where like it, all this volume is going to add up to something problematic. Well, here's a, here's another one. This is one of those things that's there's there's division in our space, right? You're either on, you're like the woo-woo side where you're like 
so anti all, you know, deodorant has aluminum, shampoo, makeup, all this stuff is so toxic, so poisonous, so bad and so yeah. extreme. And then you have the the other side that's like, oh my God, you're splitting hairs. That bullshit's not going to change the difference. And, and really it's, the, the way I look at it, because I had a, a friend of mine, they were asking me this, right? They were talking about like, Adam, do you think it's really that important that we change our shampoo or our deodorant or soap? Or and if it's, the way I look at it is like, how hard is it for me to uh, switch over to something like Dr. Squatch, right? Which is a brand that we have been looking for for over a year. I've been We've been chasing these guys down. And it's a all natural soap, and the smells are phenomenal. Like I love the soap; it's a great soap. It's not a hard leap for me to go from Irish Spring to going over to that mm -hmm. because it smells great. It still works as just as well. And the fact that I'm doing something that's all natural, that's not loaded full of these chemicals, why the fuck not? And the same thing goes for these other things like shampoo, laundry detergent. Like you know, our other partner. This was another reason why we were hunting down public goods for as long as we were hunting public goods down is they have that for all your house supplies. If you're mm -hmm. spraying it on your countertops, if you're putting it- Washing inside, your hands. Yeah, yeah, washing your hands, your laundry detergent, your shampoo. Like if if it's not a hard leap for you to go from using a shampoo or a laundry detergent that is full of chemicals versus one that is not, why wouldn't you? It's not changing. It's not interrupting my life that bad that it's that big of a deal. And now me. we have companies where those products aren't even right. like way more expensive. It used to be way more expensive. Right. They used that. to be the big barrier. Yeah. Well. Okay. So here I'll, I'll make a I think a controversial statement. Okay. Now this is considering that you're eating the right amount of calories macros and you're active. Those are the most important things, by the way, okay? That you do, you know, get good sleep, those kind of things. The chemicals that you need to pay attention to, it's actually more important, believe it or not, that you pay attention to the chemicals in your skin products, in your makeup, than it is your food products, okay? And I know that sounds controversial, but here's why. The regulations that go into the chemicals in your food are way more stringent mm. than the regulations that go into the products that you rub onto your skin or put on your face or use it for fe feminine hygiene is a big one. Do you know that tampons, they're regulated like a textile, you know, that they're not even regulated, uh, like, like it, like a food because it's not a food, but you're putting it inside your body yeah. and those membranes absorb. They're very, very porous and they're, they're like their mucous membranes, right? They, they absorb quite a bit, but they're not regulated the same way. Um, I'll give you another great example. I talked about this on a show recently, uh, sunscreens, mm -hmm. sunscreens, the chemical sunscreens, the FDA says that uh, there's a certain level of these chemicals that can go up to your that you can have in your body, and above that is considered not safe. Okay, they recently that's after these sunscreens have been on the market forever. Recently did studies and found that people that use these sunscreens, they had amounts of these chemicals stored in their body that were something like hundreds or thousands of times higher than the upper limit that the FDA gave them. Mm. So these things are just not regulated nearly as stringently. And so you combine all these things, yeah, you probably, you're gonna you're gonna have some effects in your body and some of these are hormonal. And look, I'm not gonna make this as a direct connection, but here's what we're seeing, okay? Testosterone levels now for, for a few decades have been dropping in men. Everybody's like blown up. They don't understand what's going on, but it's true. A man, a 30 year old man today's testosterone levels are as low or high or whatever as like something, a man in his mid 50s, you know, in the 1970s. Like that's, that's a big, it's a, it's a consistent drop. Uh, you know, estrogen, progesterone levels. It's very common now for women to have those out of balance. Fertility issues mm -hmm. are common in both men and women. And a lot of people think that some of it or a big part of it has to do with, all these chemicals that we're exposed to all the time, just over the course, it's not going to hurt you if it happens once or twice, maybe not even for a year, but think about your favorite brands of shampoos and, and skin lotions and makeup well, I just and soaps heard, that you've used for decades, right? Yeah, you mentioned makeup. I mean, I just recently even found out, I'm sure you guys already know this, but like some of the makeup that was actually had radioactive materials in it to where it was like eating away at people's flesh and they finally were like, oh, let's take this off the market. It's probably bad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> How did that company stay around? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was yeah. like, it was absurd. I couldn't yeah. believe it. This is why, you know, comic books lie to you, don't they? It's like uh, anytime you have radiation on you in comic books, you just get superpowers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, why happen. did that work? <laughs> I really think it's the it's the onslaught of all of it right totally I, it's it, it if you were to study one and that's why they can that's why they can get away with uh you know being on the market is that if you studied one of these things for a three or six month period of time said oh this person used these tampons every single day for six months we don't see enough of right. this or so oh they're fine it passes 
But when you start looking at all the things you use, and you're and and, and yeah, the, shampoo, toothpaste, yeah, deodorant, and lotion, the assault just, of all yeah, of them, pelting yourself. You got to think that, that there's got to be a compounding effect. And again. If it's not costing me a fortune, it's not changing my lifestyle that much that it's that drastic of a deal. Why the fuck not? That's the way I look at it. And you're right. Like when it when this first came out, and all the people that were making products like this were private. They were they were small mom and pa, and so they had to charge an arm and a leg. It all because, smelled like patchouli oil. Yeah, it yeah. was exactly no. So it was like God. This smells gross, and it's and it's expensive as shit. Like uh, I'll take the aluminum in my deodorant. I'll take the fucking net, right. whatever the the Irish Spring soap if it's got some chemical. But now where we're at, the market demands push this where you have big companies like Public Goods and Dr. Squash that are able to deliver a product like this that's all natural and it's healthy and it's not assaulting your body weight and it's not super expensive. So I, I just that's my opinion on somebody who's considering that. It's like if it's not that big of a leap, why wouldn't you do that? Absolutely. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come check us out on YouTube if you want to see our faces which are made for radio. You know you do. I warned you. Um, you can also find all of us on Instagram. You can even find Doug, the producer. By the way, Doug does a lot of behind-the-scenes stuff on Instagram, so you can see uh, what we wear on our bottoms while we're recording because you don't see what's happening with our pants. Whoa. Yeah, it'll trip you out. Uh, you can find Doug at Mind Pump Doug on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam. A lot of these influencers, I also know people in fitness, and these people posting pictures of themselves looking shredded, and I'm so healthy, and I'm so fit. They, they, some of them are some of the most unhealthy people mm. in real life that you'll ever meet. Terrible body image issues, terrible relationships to food, some of them serious eating disorders.